Welcome to the Bible Forum. I'm Warren Sprouse. It's Sunday night, and I believe it's the last Sunday in February of 2019. I keep looking at this February. February is when uh, the radio station in Wilmington stopped doing uh, talk radio and went to something else, and I was out of a job. Uh, February was also when I started doing the show from my office, which I now call my studio. And so here we are, what, four years later, <clears throat> and we're still doing it. And I laugh every once in a while to think, the folks in Wilmington, that the radio station were a little short-sighted. Uh, <laughs> it's just me. Anyway, it's a kind of an anniversary, uh, and uh, I appreciate all of y'all. Uh, staying with me. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. I know stuff is not very communicative, and I do it deliberately uh, so that you can mock me, and that's okay. Uh, but we've got a lot of some topics to discuss that I think are of mutual interest and perhaps uh, of value. We learned uh, this week uh, just a uh, well, actually, it was seven days ago. It was last Sunday. Uh, it didn't get produced uh, out until late in the day. It didn't find its way onto the Bible Forum. But our president, President Trump, has signed uh, appropriations legislation. Uh, according to the news item, it was the week prior that this occurred. Uh, we're just now being talk told about it. Uh, but he signed legislation that blocks the sale of F-35 fighter jets to Turkey. I didn't know we were selling them to Turkey. Uh, I guess we are. Uh, we're not doing that anymore. Uh, this particular bill is likely to trigger sanctions against Turkey. Uh, things that have uh, been circulating around. Turkey has been pivoting toward Russia over the last months, years, uh, meaning the sanction will not impress Turkey's leadership at all. They will continue moving away from the transatlantic alliance and into the Russia-Iran sphere, making Israel's life a little more tense. Turkey recently purchased a missile defensive system from Russia. And for those of you who are eschatologically oriented and you do like to talk about the things that are coming at the end, the Bible does picture Russia and Turkey and Iran together coming after Israel. And we're watching this now unfold in ways that we, we never saw before. We also got an alert this week about an insect apocalypse. Scientists are now calling uh, this thing uh, an insect apocalypse, uh, claiming that it has serious, extremely serious implications for the future of our planet. No longer global warming, now it's the insects. Apparently all over the globe, insect populations are plummeting dramatically. They're just dying off. And since insects are at the very foundation of global food chain, that's, that's bad news for all of us. In fact, one expert described what is happening to the global insect population as hyper-alarming. If we continue, he says, down this path, the path we are currently on, a bleak, apocalyptic future for our planet is all but assured. We've seen a 60% decline in less than 50 years. Albert Einstein once said, if the bee disappeared off the face of the earth, man would have only four years le left to live. Now, consider what this new study has discovered. The bee species in the UK, Denmark, and North America have taken major hits. Bumblebees, honeybees, wild bee species are all in decline. Here at home, the number of honeybee colonies dropped from 6 million in 1947 to a third that amount, 2.5 million, just 60 years later. Now, we aren't there yet, but a food chain cataclysm apparently is right around the corner.
Today, the city of Havana, which is the capital of Cuba, is the oldest socialist city in the West. A symbol of the problems of Cuba today is that it has been under reconstruction for the last 50 years without any progress at all. Painted facades with deteriorating interiors, potted roads and highways forcing all vehicles to drive slowly, abandoned churches as socialist secularists dominate the society. Beautiful architecture from the 16th, 17th, 18th centuries are crumbling into an eventual death, taking traditional values along with it. Cuba claims to be both a democracy and a socialist country, a de democratic socialist nation. That just happens to be what Bernie Sanders, Sanders and Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez want to create here for us. The parliament and secretary are both elected. More than half the parliament of Cuba are women, as socialism for the last 60 years emasculated the male population. The Cuban constitution states that the means of production is owned by the state. All people receive about the same income from the government. Every person receives a paycheck whether they work or whether they don't. Every person receives a place to live according to the needs of that particular person or family. Married people have larger homes than single people. Families with children have the largest homes. Food is rationed per person. That is that each person receives eight eggs a month. Food, income, shelter, education, and health care are all provided by the Cuban government, which replace traditional roles of husbands and fathers. If you like Cuba, you're going to love Bernie Sanders' America. I know you've seen it. You've probably heard it. Maybe you've just become accustomed to it. I'm talking about what passes for news today. News, especially on television, has become something akin to salacious gossip and political indoctrination. Gone are the Douglas Edwards and the Edward R. Murrows and the John Cameron Swayze's who read the news without comment. Gone is the rundown of events of the day provided as an alternative to newspapers. Now we have celebrity newscasters who provide entertainment with the news, colored by the liberal bias of their network. In the 30-minute primetime evening news, we are provided about eight minutes of actual news, followed by seven minutes of Hollywood gossip, followed by three minutes of human interest story thrown in at the end with 12 minutes of commercials where commentators and news gatherers make comments, they're generally colored by the liberal line. The cable outlets are generally worse. They're not limited by FCC rules and the moral codes that go along with it. Fox News seems to be something of an exception, although it's not without its bias. What stands out on Fox Cable is the opinion of their hosts and many of their guests, which tend toward the overt conservative, uh, meaning that it's common sense, it's American values. This from their hosts, from their hostesses, and even from mo many of their guests, although they do try to have a balance when they put one on, they try to put one on against it. When a liberal is featured, his or her opinions, values are generally dramatically different than what the station is broadcasting or what most Americans believe, and it punctuates the differences. Of course, the web is worse, unless you know how to navigate the pitfalls. And what we're watching is the dichotomy in American politics, a dichotomy in American education and even in religion all of which is acted out on what used to be news programs. Programming the masses 
who only hear the loudest and most outrageous voices on the most liberal media outlets. Tonight you have chosen to spend your time with me instead of sitting back and turning on your television and watching the Oscars. The Oscars are being presented this evening for the 91st time. Have you ever wondered what this show is all about? It's largely about skin. The women wear as little as possible. The comments are boorish, designed to be as offensive as possible. The tenor is pretentious. Vulgarity and slutware paraded as art. Movies being highlighted this year are more boorish and spectacular than ever. They feature violence and sex and drugs and nudity because that's what sells. There are a few decent movies scattered in there. Mary Poppins. Make a sweet moral film about decent values and honesty where everyone keeps their clothes on and no one insults people with their language and just see how many nominations that movie gets. There was a time in human history when show folk were considered immoral, just generally speaking. Bigoted we are. You saw show folk, you just knew they were immoral. You say, that's not fair. It was an observation born of fact. Just a hundred years ago, ordinary parents would never allow their children to be involved with these immoral people. People who dressed in scanty clothing and flaunted their sexuality in dance and comedy routines, slapstick. Women who traveled from city to city with little or no chaperones. Men who made suggestive comments and worse, as a matter of fact, did it right on the stage. The burlesque shows, the comedy routines, the dancing. Have you ever wondered why ballet dancers wear so little clothing? And why are the men's outfits so tight? Well, it gives them better movement. No, it doesn't. Producers of the Oscar show have been struggling for the last 20 years to make an entertaining program that doesn't put people to sleep, and they haven't had a whole lot of success. The ratings for this particular program have been dropping for decades. The 2008 Oscar show garnered the lowest ratings ever. That is until last year, 2018. That telecast dragged on for almost four hours with no surprises. Doesn't appear that this trend is going to change anytime soon. It comprised of a group of people setting out to shock and to embarrass as many as possible, to flaunt both their sexuality and their liberal political bias, and all the while trying to convince us that they are glamorous, that they are talented. As the old saying goes, methinks you protest too loudly. Did you know or have you ever thought about how that the nations of this world are arranged around religion? All of them. In Russia, China, Cuba, and now Venezuela, it's communism. Communism is a state religion of ownership and control masquerading as a populist movement. Interestingly, anti-Christian. In the Far Eastern nations, it has always been Buddhism, Shintoism, Confucianism, Hinduism, Zoroasterism, Pantheism, and any other ism you can think of. In the Muslim world, it's Mohammedism since 600 AD. In Israel, it's Judaism, based on the biblical Old Testament law. In Great Britain, Europe, and Canada, it's a form of republicanism, a governing policy wherein the citizens hold popular sovereignty. 
And these nations were, are largely Christian oriented. It's a growing popular system, this popular sovereignty. In Great Britain and Canada, the Canada, the monarchy of England holds sway, but the parliament, elected by the people, do the governing. The details vary from nation to nation. Even today, a number are drifting away from popular sovereignty into socialism. But it's religion that drives all these governing forms. The paganism of the East, the humanism of the West, are religious in nature. That invisible gods rule, or that people become their own gods, bowing only to their own ideals, passions, or desires. Here in the United States, we are officially governed by our laws. We are a republic. Laws based upon biblical principle. Laws enacted by the people we elect. A currency governed by the law of a just weight and measure. A judiciary governed by our laws and by precedent, all of which is based upon the word of God. But even that has been slipping in the last 80 or 90 years. Albert Camus, Camus, Albert Camus, he's got an S on the end of his name, fools me all the time said, without religion, man is a creature of circumstance. Augustus Hare said that man is the only creature that wills. And Thomas Mann said a man is the only creature who refuses to be what he is. Today, a large percentage of Americans are pagan in that they observe no form of divine religious obligation or are overtly oriented away from the one true God of heaven, who would have us bow to him and to his governing principles. In this orientation, they seek to take us all back to a world without objective moral standards, where men easily move us forward and back upon their own whim or desire. And as more and more Americans reject the one true God of heaven, we are falling prey to the siren call of humanism. Humanism is nothing less than man's attempt to replace God with himself. The exaltation, glorification of all that is human in our morals, in our intellect, our art, technology, religion, we point back to ancient scientists like Democritus, a man who helped develop, develop the atomist school. He did that in 400 AD. He concluded that all things are made of fundamental and invisible particles, which he called atoms. An atheistic philosopher, along with Pythagoras, Plato, and Aristotle, he rejected God as creator. It is this philosophy that now dominates Western civilization. And it's atheistic. It's claiming there is no God. And finally, there are people in this world, oddly enough, who watch my videos. Videos that are posted on the website, thebibleforum.net, posted on the Facebook page for the Bible Forum, posted on the YouTube channel for the Bible Forum. Speaking of which, for the last two weeks, I have uploaded all of these videos onto YouTube, either Sunday night or Monday morning, only to find people writing to me on Wednesday saying, when are you going to upload them? I have no idea what that's about but I'm going to stay up all night. No, I'm not. I'm going, <coughs> I'm going to do it again tonight, and I'm going to watch it tomorrow morning. I'm going to write myself a note. No idea why this is happening. Anyway, they do watch these things. 
and none of them more than what I said about Jan Crouch two years ago, I forget when it was now, about get Jan Crouch not being able to heal herself. You know, she did die. Today, another reaction from a viewer. A viewer that says, quote, Mr. If you would be personally watching Jesus' crucifixion back then, you would be one of the mockers of Jesus. Jesus looked at people's hearts. Probably they all have brought more people to know the Lord than you do. Prepare your final judgment interview with the Lord. Hope you have enough good deeds so that you can enter. Enough said? Theology is askew.